tough, tough, uh, Mr. McCain, is retired Air Force Colonel Lee Ellis. He spent more than five years as a prisoner of war in the infamous Hanoi Hilton in Vietnam at the same time that John McCain was held captive there. Colonel, welcome. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. I know that you've tried to reach out to Senator McCain, but what, what would you like to say to him? Well, I would like for him to know that we are standing with him, by him, even though physically not there. Uh, you know, when in a POW camp, when you're alone, when you're fighting a battle uh, and against the enemy, and cancer is certainly his enemy now, you don't want to be alone. And we would risk our lives to reach out to our teammates, to come alongside them and encourage them and say, we're with you, we're proud of you, and uh, we're going to make it. And those are the kind of the words that I would like to be able to stand beside him today and say. I'm sure he would welcome them. Um, during the time when when you were in captivity um, with Senator McCain, um, he showed great strength then. Can you describe that for us? Yes, I can. Uh, I was captured 11 days after Senator McCain. We came home on the same airplane. I knew of him at first. I knew that he was uh, badly injured. In fact, he was probably the most seriously injured and wounded prisoner of war who actually came home. And he probably wouldn't have made it had they not realized that he had real value to them because his far, father was the four-star admiral in charge of the Pacific. So they gave him the minimum to keep him alive and put some Americans with him to keep him going. And they nursed him back to health. But he had both arms broken, his leg was broken, he was stabbed with a bayonet, he was beaten with the back of the, the rifle butts, and he was in terrible shape. But he fought back and maintained his, uh, his fight, you might say, and over the years, his, his resilience was amazing. In fact, he'd only been there a few months when they tried to give him an early release for propaganda. You know, they released three people in 1968 twice, and then uh, a little bit later, they released three more, and then once three more. And each one of those was a propaganda release to try to show what good job they were doing in treating the POWs. And Senator McCain recognized what it was and refused to go home. For that, he was tortured, put in solitary confinement, and he stayed there five more years after that, when he could have gone home early. I'm just glad they didn't offer me that at that point. That would have been a tough decision. Oh my goodness. So, you know, I, I know more than one person who've said, John McCain went through all of that. Yes. And then this happens to him. It's just not fair. Well, life is not fair. We all, uh, many of our friends today, uh, I was the youngest guy in the camp generally that was there more than five years. So I'm pretty young for the, for the group. Most of the guys are about 81 right now. The average POW is, from Vietnam is 81 now. And so we're facing a lot of health problems. Two of my friends are battling cancer right now. So it's just part of life. And uh, if anybody's going to battle it, John McCain's going to battle it. I agree with you, sir. Um, something else, right? Yeah. Ellis. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.